Well, uh, it all began with the metaverse, with, uh, Neil, with a quote from Neil Stevenson, uh, Snow Crash. And, and it begins, when Hero first saw this place 10 years ago, the monorail, monorail hadn't been written yet. He and his buddies had to write car and motorcycle software just to get around. They would take their software out and race it in the black desert of the electronic night. So that was uh, the beginning of this marvelous thesis, which evolved with the help of his friends into 44,344 lines of Python code for a new network order based in the roots of truth and trust. Well, years ago, I wrote a book called Life After Television. And in that book, I said that the computer, this is in 1990, and in that book, I said that the computer of the future would be as portable as your watch, as personal as your wallet, it would recognize speech, it would navigate streets, it would collect your news and your mail, it just might not do windows, <laughs> but it would open doors, doors to your future, doors of perception. I also said in that book that in the future dominated by the internet, no one would ever have to see any ads they didn't want to see anymore. And that didn't quite happen. And uh, what uh, we're finding now is the fundamental insight that ads are, sub are actually minuses unless they are uh, really well targeted uh, is uh, being discovered by Google. Nobody really wants to see an ad before they uh, look at their YouTube video. Uh, these are value subtracted ads, minuses, and uh, and they, it's not a sustainable model. And it's, and it's uh, the heart of Google's whole uh, economy. It's uh, aggregate and advertise. And uh, they are uh, capturing your data and your content and, uh, and uh, subtracting uh, their profits rather than really contributing them. Uh, free goods are not really goods. Uh, goods entail a real relationship with the customer. They, just, they entail price discovery, which is the crucial learning process in an expanding capitalist economy. They entail liabilities to customers. They entail perfecting your goods rather than just releasing your betas. They, um, and Google continually shrinks from the process of actually entering the capitalist economy and uh, testing themselves against the market. It, they're a great company, but uh, they uh, need a new business plan and aggregate and advertise and free goods to keep out the competition. Nobody can compete with free um, is not uh, tenable. But even more important is the failure of security. Uh, with that, it said Google thinks security is a matter of the Google SWAT teams. You know, Wired Magazine has a, a, an article this month on, uh, on Google SWAT teams. And the, but uh, security is not a video game. It's an architecture. And, uh, and, and to try to uh, patch security retroactively is uh, futile. 
You know, they're trying to re-centralize the internet to create safe spaces for transactions. But we're discovering that centralization is not safe. And uh, it uh, creates all sorts of irresistible attractions to hackers. It, it uh, isolates the honey pots of most crucial uh, data and uh, just begs to be hacked. Further, internet fiefdoms are not sustainable. You know, if, if, two, uh, if Larry Page and uh, Sergey Brin, two uh, nerds in Silicon Valley, can have their all, all, whole internet fiefdom, and Mark Zuckerberg can have another one, and uh, Bezos can have another one, what about the people of China? Can't uh, China have its own fiefdom? And uh, how about the mullahs of Iran? And certainly the EU can have its fiefdom. And so the result of this assertion of increasing control over a segmented internet breaks down and as this Google is discovering, having been driven out of China and now virtually being driven out of Europe. So, so the, the Google model doesn't, doesn't work. We need a new next generation uh, internet. And I think we're getting it with Blockstack. And there, I, it's a cadaster economy. Cadaster is the old word for, blo for blockchain. It's a, it's a ledger that contains all the, the goods and services, the assets in a particular community from the Middle Ages. And I think cadaster should be retrieved for our economy. Well, what are the key principles? One is that it's logically centralized. There's one view of state but no central control. And that's really the definition of the blockchain. As uh, Munib says, it's the most sophisticated and complex yet elegant and beautiful technology I've ever run across. And it is indeed a major insight and uh, breakthrough worthy of a new renaissance. Another principle, that's crucial, that hasn't been understood completely by the blockchain community, is to separate the control plane from the data plane. This is a fundamental principle of networking, but uh, it isn't, hasn't been uh, grasped fully by Ethereum and other uh, cluttered and complex blockchain endeavors. And I think that uh, this is a brilliant insight of Blockstack, is to separate the control plane from the data plane. Makes it, makes it the uh, scalable system that uh, is completely, can, can uh, improve with the advance of uh, technology even faster than the advance of technology. And there are all sorts of wonderful security technologies, hardware technologies uh, being developed. There's a company called Genetics that's learned how to do private keys through the fluctuations in the molecules in microchips. So they get pure random numbers in microchips for private keys. This is Genetics Corporation. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of other really fascinating advances in security that uh, will feed into the block stack uh, adventure. And a third is that the new, a new architecture must be compatible with the old architecture. It must be able to grow without directly displacing or confronting the established powers. And uh, we learned this lesson in politics a few years back. The Russians and Chinese did different paths to liberalization. 
the Russians tried to liberate their economy from the center, issuing prestoroika across the land. And this meant that all the forces that were threatened by the change all would mobilize against it. It maximized opposition. Well, in China, they followed the opposite strategy. They created free zones all along uh, the following the example of Hong Kong. And, the, and all the forces worked to expand the free zones. All the activity happened in the free zones. Everybody wanted to get into the free zones. And uh, so uh, China actually could create a thriving capitalist economy while Russia has staggered from the outset. And I think that the genius of Blockstack is that it transforms the existing internet into a kind of utility to feed the Blockstack system. But the Blockstack system begins quietly uh, as, it, as more and more people claim their rights to their identities and to their data, they will uh, increasingly exert pressure and shape of the established uh, companies, uh, but uh, they are not directly throwing down the gauntlet uh, to, uh, the, to the old order, and that makes it possible for it to grow. And a final point is, comes from information theory. I've, been, I've written two or three books now about information theory, applying it to economics. And one of the key principles is it takes a low entropy carrier, that's a carrier with no surprises, to bear high entropy creativ creativity and messages. And, and that, is, uh, a f that is fundamental. And uh, uh, again, the blockchain is the low entropy carrier that can enable all sorts of creativity on top of it. Uh, it's not the whole solution. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a source of trust and truth. Uh, it's a root of trust and truth. But, it's, it, but you shouldn't make the blockchain perform functions that it can't perform. And uh, I was uh, involved in the Java movement for a long time. And uh, the, I think that the virtual chains that Jude Nelson created for uh, Blockstack are similar to the virtual machines, the Java virtual machines, that enable portability across all the browsers. And this uh, uh, virtual chains enables portability across all the blockchains. And uh, it's already been demonstrated with the move from Namecoin to Bitcoin, of course. So uh, this is a, a tremendous uh, feature of uh, an invention of Blockstack that uh, makes them uh, vitally important. So uh, in uh, Life After Television, I spoke about the overthrow of all the principles and powers, pyramids and power grids of the existing establishment. And uh, now I think uh, it didn't happen, but now Blockstack can really lead a movement along with people like Brendan Eich. I'm going down to see Brendan Eich and uh, write about his Brave browser, which is a, a great contri contri contributor to this movement of a new internet. And uh, they are going to take this, overthrow this so called winner take all internet and make it an, an internet where we can all be winners again. Thank you.